This video is sponsored by my friend Thomas Brush and his course Full Time Game Dev. Get a massive 40% course discount using the link in the description. I had three days to create a game for the Game Jam, hosted by Jonas Tyroller. The theme was Failure is Progress. ended up creating Necrobomb, an atmospheric adventure where an undead wizard conquers a crumbling fortress. One thing I love about game jams is how with only a handful of days, developers can still make really interesting creations. To me, the ticking clock can at times be very soothing, it's an end point, and the perfectionist in me crumbles away to meet the deadline. Priorities are made straight, and the constraints create moments of razor-sharp focus. The idea for Necrobomb came very quickly. An undead creature dying and having that death slash failure mean something more than game over was extremely satisfying to think about. Having spent many hours playing Spelunky and Wibbly Witches of late, destructible terrain was something I was eager to explore. So here's the idea. A game where dying creates an enormous explosion, destroying enemies and chunks of the level, which helps you make progress in a spooky phantom form. The game started like this and ended up with eight levels, including a boss fight, menus, and juicy sound effects. Quite a few people seem to really like the art and game feel and wonder how I pulled this off in such a short amount of time. So let me bring you through the creation process of Necrobomb step by step. First of all, the art had to be very simple. At first I was going to go for this cartoony outline style, similar to what I did for the Twisted Factory. However, I realized that making destructible terrain and pretty platformer levels in this style would take a long time, a resource I did not possess in heaps. The beauty of Silhouette is that the artist can leave it up to the player's wild imagination to fill in the gaps. These platforms are simply black squares glued together. There's no details, it's pure simplicity and anyone can do it. Extreme simplicity feels great mostly thanks to good controls and little effects like a trail that follows the character, particles when he lands, some screen shake to make it more impactful, and smooth animation transitions. The trail is a sprite with a rigid body that bounces, and there's a fade out animation as well. Same for the little ghost the player leaves behind. So how did I get from this to this? First of all, we need to change this bland purple background. I opened Photoshop and created a textured pattern using this simple brush. Then I added that background behind everything in my scene and parented it to the camera so it follows the player around and remains static. Next, parallax. Such an easy thing to add and it creates depth and life. Again, I make simple white shapes in Photoshop. I use white so it's easy to change the color in Unity. Then I make sure my camera is set to perspective mode. This way, simply changing the Z value of my objects creates a parallax effect without the need for complex scripts. The objects further away from the camera move slower than those that are closer. And so you can have multiple layers in the background with perhaps even a foreground like I did with these clouds and occasional twisted tree. To add some movement to the scene, I add a super basic particle system. It's just black fluffy circles slowly floating upwards, with some noise to add a little randomness and appeal. Hopefully you'll notice these are super basic tricks anyone can do. Let's continue adding life to our world. A fun way is to add creatures, insects or little animals. They don't need to impact gameplay, they just add texture to the scene. I would have added more variety, but again, had to be realistic and careful with my time. Lastly, I use soft shapes for some lighting effects and variations in the background color. It's a soft white cone made using a default Photoshop brush, which I then overlay on top of my scene. You can make each level look quite distinctive by simply changing the background color. Again, heading to Photoshop using the same brush and replacing the background sprite parented to the camera. I then use these soft shapes so that the change in color between levels makes more sense and the world feels more connected. For example, level four is a spooky purple and level five is dark and stormy. So I add a soft black overlay to the end of level four so that entering level five is less of a shock. Adding different particle effects, again, very simple, can make for some neat variety with minimal work. Don't hesitate duplicating stuff and rotating and scaling it. This is another great way to recycle assets and save time. For example, this same tree is scattered around the world, and by simply changing the X direction, rotation, and scale, I think I get away with it just fine. Let's now take a look at this rain effect. 
how did I make this? Well, I duplicated the floating black one made earlier, rotated it so the particles fall down instead of going up, changed the sprite inside of the texture sheet animation module to a raindrop made in Photoshop, and finally played around with these basic settings. In less than 10 minutes, I was happily done. Hopefully you can see that art doesn't need to be a huge obstacle and neat results can be achieved with a few basic shapes and you'll have a ton of fun building your world. If you're willing to spend a few bucks, then consider purchasing the all-in-one shader pack, which I've mentioned a couple times recently. It's pure goals and can add subtle effects to your world in a few clicks. For example, the spikes that wobble like this is a simple hand-drawn effect, which I tick in the inspector. The bosses hit animation was made with this hit box here. And you guessed it, this stylish distortion effect is another box to check. Necrobomb is the first game I have made that can be played using a controller. I love controllers, so I'm not sure why I didn't do this earlier. I'm currently working on a small multiplayer game which also uses controllers. And while working on that, I discovered a fantastic asset pack called Rewired that just makes the whole input system a joyful breeze. I could effortlessly make the game playable on both keyboard and controller and ah, it's so satisfying controlling the little necromancer using a joystick. And since we're on the topic of great assets, I hope you all use Cinemachine to make your camera follow the player. It just couldn't be simpler. You go to Cinemachine, create 2D camera, and drag and drop the player in this empty slot in the inspector. Then there's a bunch of settings which you can either leave alone or tweak to get the exact camera feel you like. I'm talking to Jonas here, who's notorious for creating clunky cameras in every game I've worked on with him. Ah, just teasing. But seriously, Cinemachine is pure goals. Now, destroying the terrain to make progress in the level is a big part of the experience, so making that feel nice and juicy was fun. With more time, I would have created a ripple effect using this simple shader script I found online a while back, and perhaps add a lasting mark in the background for extra impact. Then I designed every level, trying to make clever use of either the destructible terrain or the change in the necromancer's form. The simple blocks made level design quite easy. Perhaps I should try Unity's tile map system, but haven't learned how to use it yet and was concerned I would run out of time. So instead, I hold down control to snap blocks together. After nailing the initial look in level one, I happily copy everything in the scene and paste it in level two deleting all but one block, and then I begin sketching out a level. At this point, I wasn't concerned about making the levels look distinct, that would come later. I was simply focused on cooking the meat and potatoes of the experience. This brings me to an interesting lesson I'm learning, and that's mixing prototyping and beautifying. A developer could reasonably argue that adding lots of little animations and details to the player character before there's even a game is risky and maybe not a priority. I would say that it is important from a motivation point of view. As the developer, you'll be spending a lot of time in your made up world and doing a lot of playtesting. If all those hours are spent staring at a stiff square, you're more likely to quit the project or lose confidence. So this eye candy helps fuel the end vision. It's important not to overdo this and spend aeons on the first platform graphic, but a little can be key. Then there's times where you need to speed up sketch things out roughly, be a little messy, and leave polish for later. But perhaps throughout development, consider adding these little game juice details to keep you going, and not feel like your game is a limp cabbage all the way up until the end of development. Game juice includes particles, animations, screen shake, but also sound effects. I used the ultimate sound effects pack, another great investment. Having little footstep sounds is so neat, and a variety of great ambience tracks help fill in the quiet. Insights and when reading feedback, I realized that again, the game is harder than intended for most players. I really need to make a greater effort in toning down difficulty and keeping in mind that what is fair challenge for the developer is probably very tough for most players. Certain levels, especially those with creatures falling from the sky, feel a bit unfair and I agree I should have perhaps zoomed out the camera a little more so players have more time to dodge and plan ahead. Many players found ways to cheat levels by destroying bits of terrain and skipping ahead, something I would have probably fixed with a little more time, 
but perhaps I would have kept a few of these cheats, which I find quite interesting and hopefully a little exciting for players. It would have also been cool to add little secrets and easter eggs hidden under the terrain waiting to be uncovered by curious players. All in all, it was a great Game Jam experience. Thanks for watching and thank you Jonas for hosting this event. This video is sponsored by indie developer and YouTuber Thomas Brush. He's been making indie games for pretty much every platform for the last decade, including his latest game, Never Song, on Nintendo Switch and Steam. Thomas had to work extremely hard, but now makes six figures a year to support his family and studio. He let me try out his latest project, a comprehensive online platform called Full Time Game Dev, with over 800 students. And there's just so much to learn here. Not only will you learn how to actually make a game from scratch, but you're also going to learn how to make money with your game. You'll learn about publishers, crowdfunding, building a personal brand, marketing, bundles, and a strategic method to securing a slot on the Steam front page. There's a massive 40% discount for the first 300 students that use the link in the description and the coupon code NOAH. Click below if you're interested and begin your indie game dev journey. Thanks for watching. Cheers.